Hello, it's Nathan from Guardian Project, and I'm doing this video to give a quick update on our Clean Insights project that we've been working on on and off for the last few years, and really intensely in the last year. Clean Insights is a framework, an approach, and a collection of software development kits and tools and uh, scripts and user interface um, components that is meant to make it easy to implement privacy preserving measurement in an application, in a service. And, you know, our focus is always on helping users who are already um, facing a lot of challenges, who may be already under um, severe surveillance, who have their human rights endangered. And so any data we collect, we have to be very careful about, and we have to ensure the user wants this and benefits from it. Yet at the same time, um, we need to understand our, our services functioning, are people using them? So we've had this idea for a while of how to implement some kind of metrics or analytics system, but again, in a privacy preserving way. And so Clean Insights is a project we've been working on with our partners at OK Thanks, who are our uh, better half related to usability and design and community research um, and internews whose basics program is really focused on supporting open source efforts uh, projects to be more sustainable especially ones related to internet freedom and human rights the you know team that I lead Guardian project is um, you know a great sort of home for this in that, you know, we build a lot of apps and code and resources and have for the last 10 years. And, um, you know, our focus really is on empowering the user and protecting them. And so, you know, while we want this ability, we're quite cautious and experienced in, you know, what we want to do and what could go wrong. So Guardian Project is the home for Clean Insights. And it actually came out of a program called Assembly, which is... Um, run and was created by the Berkman Klein Center for Internet and Society at Harvard. I was a part of the Assembly 2017 program um, and had a great team there um, where it began with a, a bunch of people from different companies and organizations, including Square and Apple and Google and um, the UN. And, you know, we thought about this problem of um, wanting to understand effectiveness of, of software and applications and services without further sort of, you know, um, infringing on users' privacy. But, you know, we don't know often if we're successful because while we have millions of active users, that's one metric, um, we don't really have a way to reach out to them often or to uh, see if they're having problems and see how we can improve our service. So we understand people building products need a way to understand these things, um, but we understand, of course, that it shouldn't come at a cost to the user. Uh, back in 2017, there was an app that came out called Me Too. It was like a, a photo editing app, um, I think from China. And, you know, it asked for crazy over the top permissions um, for a photo editing app. And they said, oh, it's, it's our analytics system. Uh, you know, we just dropped this SDK in and, and it asked all those things. So. Whether that was true or not, the idea that sort of analytics were, was blamed for this huge violation in privacy and expansion of vulnerability uh, was interesting. We also have been inspired by the work of Tor Project um, and the late Karsten Losing, who unfortunately passed away uh, in December. Um, the work that he led and others for many years in how do you build a measurement system around an anonymity network? where the routing of data is confidential, yet um, the information you want to understand is, you know, is there censorship happening, happening in a certain part of the world? Is there throughput in the network that's, you know, pr enough? Is it increasing? Um, you know, what can we understand and how can we measure? Where can we measure? How can we filter the measurements in a way that maintains the sort of core value of Tor? Uh, and they've done that for many years and continued to improve the Tor metric system. It's very impressive and very inspirational. We also reached out in 2017 to developers who um, 
you know, might like secure messaging apps and other apps about what they might want to know if they could know and try to develop this idea of rather than, oh, let's get a bunch of data and see what's happening. Or let's get a bunch of data and look for friction points where we can reduce friction and increase stickiness. <laughs> Said, well, what are the things that you think you might want to understand in order to make the application better? So we started there and, and helped develop some of these questions. And we got concerns from users about uh, and, and product developers and um, people promoting certain applications for certain communities about concerns they had. Um, and this helped us as well. So, yeah, I've said this first um, already uh, previously, but yeah, it's good to just point it out again what our goals are with Clean Insights. The core concept we, in 2017 we settled on was the idea that you know, data isn't gold, something, oh, let's hoard the gold like dragons. Um, in fact, it's toxic and we have to be careful with it. And yeah, maybe it creates energy. Maybe it has value for a certain brief window. It's a snow day today here, so snow plows going by outside. Um, but we, you know, need to get rid of it or take care of it or reduce it as much as possible. Reduce the harm. Fun fact, at our 2017 kind of launch, the end of assembly, we actually did come in with glow sticks and biohazard suits. <laughs> I have to uh, bring those out again sometime. At that time, uh, working with Ka and other developers on the team, um, we came up with you know, a model that made sense related to interaction of the user, the filtering of kind of uh, thresholds, uh, consent, ideas around privacy protection that were computational, um, differential privacy, things like rapport, removing PII, having some queue of events such that you weren't kind of constantly, um, you know, chattering back to a server every time the user tapped on a screen um, and a way to securely dispatch and send data over the internet, perhaps through Tor or some other anonymity layer, and then additional privacy protection on the server side when you're private uh, processing data as well. So we had a flow that we were planning. And we built an initial SDK that was very much a prototype, but it worked, and we built it into a few Android kind of demo apps and that was a great you know milestone for the first assembly program so a few years have passed and we've continued to um, think about this project try to get funding talk about it as the initial assembly team but increasingly kind of brought got brought into guardian project as a home where we really knew we needed this and we'd been experimenting with pieces of it on different projects we finally wanted to make the clean insights, you know, SDKs or set of S set of SDKs for different um, environments like iOS and Android and JavaScript and Python and um, make it easy for developers to use and not just kind of a random set of scripts and ideas that we had. And so we were able to get some more funding after a few different tries and we've started implementing this. But before we began writing code again, we actually organized in May a symposium, a symposium extraordinaire, at home edition, of course, thanks to the various lockdowns due to the pandemic. Uh, but we had a really enjoyable event with great speakers, designers, um, participants by, our, by funders, by developers, by human rights activists and trainers. And we were able to use um, various sort of homework assignments and asynchronous tasks, get people to contribute ideas. Um, and I, it was really enjoyable to bring the concept back to life and kind of re-energize it with all the input from the communities we wanted to reach. Um, we did these collaborative drawing sessions around different use cases, around data dashboards, um, and again, working with people, uh, our partners at Article 19 in Mexico City, for instance, who are building a, a physical safety app for, for supporting journalists. They were a um, great contributor. And we actually made podcasts. So you can listen to all of the podcasts on our In Guard, the Guardian Project podcast show. We, again, also did with OK Thanks these sort of dashboard challenges thinking about data as a story, you know, how do we get people to understand the idea of insights versus 
raw data analytics um, and sort of big data. Instead of big data, it's sort of like small data or purpose-built data. Um, and that was, again, great to think through in it. OK, thanks. They have a lot of this on their blog. OK, thanks. Also worked with us in Internews to reach out to a number of uh, application partners, open source groups um, in the Internet Freedom Space, VPN, secure operating systems, um, and talk to them about measurement and what they might be interested in. And um, we hope that many of these become projects that implement Clean Insight. So it was a great first step to build that um, those connections and to listen to them. After the symposium and over the summer into the fall, we began implementing code. And uh, if you go to GitLab now under Clean Insights, you'll see a number of our repositories there, the projects that have um, working source code, design documents, and some of the infrastructure for the project. Right now for um, our back end, mostly we focused on client um, SDKs. We're using the open source Matomo um, measurement system on the back end. But we decided we didn't want to connect directly to Matomo because we couldn't always control what data it was logging from the clients. And so we actually we also built something called the Clean Insights Matomo proxy, which um, really is an abstraction layer so that we can have our SDKs talk to our proxy and then that can talk to a specific back end, um, which happens to be Matomo right now. So far, Matomo is working out pretty well. It's interesting to see the connection um, between our sort of privacy-preserving approach and their more typical web analytics approach. Um, we also have a client specification um, schema for JSON data, um, and a lot of this captures the concepts that we've developed and implemented over the last year. Um, this is in the design documents. Uh, kind of a, a version iteration more on some of the early design documents we had to remove some of the specific pieces like rapport and instead go to more um, conceptual blocks of work and then also implement some very specific um, object models and, and data schemas. As part of this, we're also proposing new user experience or sample kind of user experience that people can build on for how you engage with users um, to have them opt in, to join this a study as a concept, or to sort of have these interventions to say, you know, we may want to measure something right now for a limited period of time. Is that okay? We think the general like opt in, opt out in most apps is just not um, satisfactory, and so this continues to be an area where we want to invest in providing both concepts and designs, as well as eventually a, a UX library that's easy to implement for consent. Yeah, so we have different ideas in, in different places, um, and these are available as design sort of mockups, and we're working on some more sample code. Our um, first kind of new partner to implement these with the SDKs is actually a longtime partner, but it's F-Droid, the open source decentralized app store um, for Android. And um, again, this is a very sort of privacy oriented system. They don't um, log specific data. They don't know how many downloads a specific app is or how popular it is right now in their core system. But using Clean Insights, we've implemented um, tracking of basic events like install complete, install started, install interrupted. We can see when an app is installed by F-Droid itself versus by Android, um, the Android sort of play system. And we can also now see events related to specific apps, popularity. These aren't tied to a user or any long-term cookies or anything of that nature, though they are tied to country level um, country codes, much like Tor does, but that's a current option we're exploring. And yeah, uh, all of these graphs were generated in real time using Matomo on the back end. So we're pretty happy that the end-to-end -end system is um, proven and working and have someone like the F-Droid project sort of vet it and say, yeah, this works um, for us is a great first step. We have other partner applications um, that we work with around uh, worker data, 
around archiving human rights media and um, the version of Tor browser for iOS itself that we want to explore in all of these cases. Can we implement clean insights? What does it mean? What is the insight they're looking for? Um, and is it compatible with their, their code base? So now as part of our um, 2021 assembly program, which we're back for the fifth year as a um, alumni project, we're very excited. Um, we're trying to figure out in the next, you know, in this spring, um, what should we focus on now? Um, we really think that, um, you know, we're onto something, but we're really focused on the, the metadata, the analytics. Should we expand the concept to just core data and core measurement? you know, for all sorts of things and not just um, is the user happy, but does the clean insights model work for um, other kinds of core measurement functions in an application? Um, we're still quite focused on apps um, and some servers and desktop apps, and but we think also maybe we could do more to show how this could integrate in a privacy preserving way with IOT, with automotive infrastructure, with civic infrastructure, that, um, that our approach seems, um, you know, I haven't really talked about it, but the idea of pushing measurement and processing data on the edge mm -hmm. as things are smarter and have more processing power and capability, um, we can do that. We also know we want to continue to expand the privacy protections um, and more kind of implement some of the early ideas that we had with Google rapport and move on to other computational privacy um, efforts, um, differential privacy, private join and compute, other uh, tools that might be useful with certain kinds of data, certain volume of data, certain types of insights. Maybe that's what where our energy should go. Um, and really this big question, is this more than just an idea for assemblies? This, really real now i mean it is people are using it we have code but you know how big could this be should it be are we on the right track so i'm excited um and we're working with some great people and advisors and peers to work through this so that is um it for this update on clean insights you can go to cleaninsights.org um, to see the latest information from the symposium, but really we need to update that website. That's probably also on our list. Um, but on the GitLab, you can start seeing all of the code and we have various um, public chat rooms on Matrix and you can reach out an email, all the things, all the ways. And we look forward to talking to everyone more about Clean Insights and thanks for listening. <laughs>